Hey guys, I'm Mike, and today we're gonna kind of go over the V8 Mark III now that it's a functional car. Last time you saw it, uh, it was just kind of a shell. Uh, I'd figured out most of the suspension and kind of some of the driveline stuff, but it's come a long way since then, and now it's a functional car. So we're gonna show you what that's like and kind of all the details that put it together. Last time it was just kind of some sheet metal parts hung on it to get an idea of where things needed to be. But now I've actually finalized everything and mounted it. The front track width is so wide on this that I had to cut the fenders, you know, at the belt line essentially and pull them a bunch, as well as put flares on it just to cover the tire. I got the factory bumper back on, but it's actually stretched over a bash bar. So each side is about two inches wider. You see the bash bar come through where the turn signals used to be. So I had to put these little guys instead because this is street legal. Um, as we kind of go around this, you know, the mono wiper, I would have just put the normal wipers back in it, but the roll cage goes through where the driver's side wiper arm used to be. So I had to, you know, redo all that linkage and cut it so that I could get full sweep of the, the window, um, which took, well, a considerable amount of time. There's these vents, they're pretty noticeable too. This is the inlet for the radiator. So there's two big fans and one on either side. That's the fresh air coming to the radiator, and then it comes out the back hatch. And as well, you notice kind of the awesome wrap on this thing. The guys up at the marketing did a great job. Thanks, Evan. I really appreciate it because uh, this thing looks killer. The biggest question I get with this car is why did I choose this engine? You know, a VR would have been cooler. You know, most Volkswagen guys, I didn't have a VR. I was going to go buy one. Uh, I had this engine. This came out of another car of mine. It was kind of, you know, musical engines of sorts going through the garage. So this was a victim of circumstance. It's the BMW M62 4.4 liter V8. It's the non vanos early engine. When you're going through this much work to put, you know, change the driveline orientation of a car, it doesn't really matter what engine it is. You're going to have the same issues. You have to remount everything, you know, engine mounts, all these reservoirs. I got to redo the front frame structure here. So, doesn't matter what I started with, I'd be in the same amount of work. My brake reservoirs here, I've got my power steering reservoir and oil filter. I've got CSF oil cooler here, as well as a pretty big power steering cooler to keep everything nice and cool, because power steering pumps on these have been an issue. Um, this is the intake out of my last car with this engine. So I ended up cutting it, reclocking it to get it to work, and then adding this mount. Um, and then figuring out the coolant swirl pot was the next big deal. Uh, the engine is a high point in the cooling system, as is the radiator. So I have to bleed both of those to get, you know, all the air out. So both of those ports are drilled and go into the swirl pot, and then the port from the bottom of that goes to the vacuum port, essentially on the, the water pump. So it's constantly bleeding, you know, constantly nice fresh coolant to both ends. So that's been fairly trouble free. There's a lot going on on the inside of this car. I'm sure I'm going to miss a couple things. We're going to try to touch on all of it. Uh, most notably is the paint cage. You know, I went through a lot of trouble making this cage, you know, to fit nicely, give myself the most amount of space I could. Um, so I think cages should be bright colors if you're proud of it. So that's why it is. Um, otherwise, I got these Momo seats with some brackets I had to make. Um, got the Momo wheel, the energy quick release, which makes it a lot easier to get out of these door bars. Um, got the IRP handbrake, which you know, one of my biggest pet peeves is if a handbrake has a lot of flex in it when you push on it. And the tunnel actually moved a lot on this. So I put that brace in here to try to stiffen that up. I've got our Turner um, short throw shifter with the rally lever on it, which keeps your hands from you know, reaching around all over the cabin trying to shift gears. I had to go with this Woolwood pedal box because you know I had to cut the firewall out for the engine and everything. And that's where all the factory pedals mounted. So it was just easier to go with kind of the full pedal box assembly, which gave me some nice, you know, bias knob here for the uh, front and rear brake bias. So I get some nice adjustability because who knows what this is going to handle like. Uh, I've got these nice Pro Sport gauges, which have been great to keep a tab on everything. These switches, we've got, you know, a fan override. Not, you know, not fans on, big difference. I like when fans come on when it's actually going to overheat, so I don't have to remember. But if I want to cool it off more, I can just permanently put the fans on. We've got the party lights here. We've got you know a little heater for defrost. 
little thing to charge your phone because you never know. Um, yeah, I went through the trouble of making door cards just because I'm a nerd and I like playing with bead rollers and stuff and making panels. So these came out all right and center of delete, I think came out a little better. You know, there's a fire extinguisher for safety. You know, then you can move on to the rear with all the other bits. This time around, the car is a bumper. What we don't see at the moment is the bash bar behind the bumper. At some point, I know I'm gonna back this into something, so I wanted the protection there for when I do. Next, next obvious thing is all these holes. So all the hot radiator air has to come out somewhere, and I have it coming out through the back deck lid. So I have a bunch of dimple dyed holes here, just for style points, um, as well as you know some strategically cut places here to keep the deck lid from being super wobbly. Um, I have a little plate filler here, just because it is street legal in Ohio. Uh, underneath, we have a bunch of ducting. Uh, last time, I had the front section of ducting done, but not the exit ducting. This seals up against the back of the deck lid to keep all the hot air away from me inside the car. Comes out easily and reveals the fuel cell underneath and that CSF radiator for a Jeep XJ. Everything under the car is wrapped up now. Last time you saw it, everything was just bare metal and tacked together. So I pulled it apart, fully welded everything, and then painted it. Pretty happy with how everything came out. I've got protection here for my oil pan. That was one of my concerns. So this bar hangs just as low as the pan, and you know, hopefully I don't take the oil pan out. Got my control arms, which have been powder coated. They look great. Uh, the knuckle, I'm on my third revision of the geometry here. I'm pretty happy with it. I might take a little Ackerman angle out in the future, but for now it's okay. I've got the Hawk pads and rotors in this, which make it stop awesome. And especially for, you know, for this thing, I need that. Uh, the headers are wrapped up now. Uh, last time you saw it, they didn't have collectors, but I've figured those out and then worked my way through with the rest of the exhaust. We now have the ECS universal exhaust parts. So we just have a bunch of mandrel bends that you can buy and piece together whatever you want. So I use those to make you know all the pipes here, the X pipe, then back to one of our resonators and then you know, the rest of the way out, which is just straight piped. So in my opinion, sounds pretty good. As some of you pointed out in the last video, the drive shaft isn't gonna be super straightforward with something like this. BMW used a flex disc instead of a U-joint at the back of the drive shaft. It's just a rubber coupler, you know, three bolt holes on either side, and it, that's what allows for misalignment. But the suspension doesn't move relative to the diff on a BMW, so there's not much misalignment. To combat that, I put a carrier bearing here, and then a U-joint, a slip section, and another U-joint here. So all the misalignment is in the rear half of the drive shaft. The front half doesn't move at all, keeping the flex disc happy, and then my suspension articulation is taken care of back here. This is the Explorer 488, which is the 31 spline version. Uh, this is actually a limited slip version, but I welded the spider gears because it's a little simpler, and this was the ratio I wanted, which is 373s. Uh, out here, I'm running dual Mustang calipers. Uh, There's a guy that makes a bracket to use dual Mustang calipers and the Explorer rotor, which is a little bigger. So I'm pretty happy with that. That way I can have the hydro e-brake separate from the foot brakes. That way, you know, if you do a lot of left foot braking, which I'm still working on, you can build up some residual pressure if it's an inline hydro setup. But with a divorce setup like this, I don't have that issue. Um, the four length's been pretty good. The first event out, I had rubber bushing ends on this and they all fell apart. So after that event, I came back, redid them all with heim joints and it's been great ever since then. I have my fuel pump mounted here, which is out of harm's way, but as low as I could get it. Uh, you don't want your fuel pump higher than the fuel cell. You don't want to have to pull fuel up all the time. So keeping it down here keeps the pump happy and makes it live a lot longer. Back here, I added some bracing around the fuel cell, try to keep everything rigid and reinforce the hitch a little bit. So I am using this mostly as a jack point, but maybe someday I'll tow something. Uh, it also provided a nice exhaust mount here. All right, so that should take us up to date on the V8 Mark III here. If you want to see more content like this, uh, just please subscribe and check out what else we have.